Well, even though we're in the Christmas octave here, I had to go ahead and do another uh, installment of our liturgical series here because I couldn't help myself. It fits so perfectly because today I want to talk about candles. And, you know, we've talked once before in the, when we were discussing the entrance procession about how the candle represents Christ, the light of the world. As the Gospel of John says, and Christ says in the Gospel, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so the reason I couldn't resist today is because the Gospel today, of the presentation of the child Jesus uh, in the temple, in, is also the Gospel for February 2nd, which is, of course, the feast of the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. And there's the great uh, prophecy by Simeon, or the the Nunc Dimittis, Lord, let your servant go in peace, because he speaks of the Lord as a light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for his people Israel. And on that day, February 2nd, is when we bless all the candles. We also call it Candlemas. And then, you know, the next day is St. Blaise, where you get your throat blessed with the candles. So, you know, perfect time to talk about candles. So, the, the greatest of all the candles that we use to represent Christ is the Easter candle, the Paschal candle, which, uh, you know, is consecrated at the Easter Vigil Mass uh, when the Exaltat chant is proclaimed. And the Exaltat says this, May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity. And so it speaks of how Christ is the morning star, the light of which this candle is but a representation. And these images of uh, the morning star and so forth come to us from Scripture, from Revelation. St. John sees a vision of Christ. Uh, and he says, Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man. In his right hand, he held seven stars. So these lampstands and stars are always connected uh, in John's vision with the Lord. And at the end of the book of Revelation, the Lord says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. And so, uh, for all of these reasons, this is why we associate the light of the candles with the light of Christ shining in the darkness of the world. And, you know, it's even been traditional to kind of break down the symbolism of the candle uh, into even greater detail. This might be a little bit artificial, but it's a good catechetical device, especially in Christmas as we think about the incarnation. Sometimes it's said that the wax of the candle is like the human body of Christ, and the wick which runs through it is like his human soul. But the flame which uh, burns and unites both wax and wick is like his divinity. So, there you go. Now you can impress your friends with that trivia there. But we too, since we are members of Christ's body, are also called to be light to the world. And the Lord even tells us this. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, he says, You are the light of the world. Your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. And again, in the book of Revelation, speaking uh, to the church in Thyatira, uh, the Lord says, To the victor who keeps my ways until the end, I will give the morning star. So both this image of the light and the morning star are also connected with those of us who are in Christ, who follow Christ, who do His will. And this is, of course, why at our baptism, each one of us receives a candle, a baptismal candle, which symbolizes the light of Christ now dwells in us, and we must spread that light before others. Now, of course, at Mass, as we said, the candle, the light from the candle, also symbolizes Christ's presence. And we see this in various ways. On great solemnities like today, we even light all the candles around the church to remind us that the that Christ is present in the assembly, in his people. This is what the candles always speak to, the presence of Christ in you. But then also, uh, you know, on big feasts, as we have here today, 
uh, there, there's light, uh, candles lit around the Anmu, and on Christmas, you know, all the servers come down with the lights and everything. And that reminds us that the Christ is present in His Word. Um, but of course, the biggest, the biggest place is around the altar itself and the tabernacle. Sometimes uh, you'll see candles there as well, because of course that is the true, substantial presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And so always are there are altar uh, candles by the altar, and there's significance in the number there as well. You know, of course, it's the obvious idea is the more solemn the occasion, the more candles there are. But there are particular symbolism as well. You know, for the bishop when he celebrates Mass, he always has seven candles, and this is from that a vision of Revelation where Christ is seated with seven golden lampstands because the bishop has the fullness of holy orders. He is most like Christ, and so he gets those seven candles. And it also reminds us of a typological connection with the, the great lampstand that used to be in the, the sanctuary of the temple and the tabernacle of the Jews, the menorah, which has seven uh, branches to it. So, but with a regular Mass, you know, six, of course, is the most solemn, two is the most basic, and then there's four in between. Um, but four actually has a kind of unique symbolism, it also coming from the book of Revelation. There, John has that vision of the great heavenly liturgy, where all the angels and saints are worshiping uh, God and the Lamb. And he sees in the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, were covered with eyes inside and out. Day and night, they do not stop exclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and who is, and who is to come. <coughs> and so these four great creatures, these four angelic creatures that stand around the throne of God, uh, remind us when we have four candles around the altar of that scene from the book of Revelation. So, as we prepare to receive our Lord in Holy Communion today, let us really and truly take His presence into ourselves to become that light of the world. Not that we are the source of that light, but that He is in us, shining through us, and we are allowing ourselves to be transparent, that His light may overcome the darkness of this world.